hope I'm ready. So Quay and welcome everyone to Building Bridges One and Building More Bridges. We would like to acknowledge all the ancestral traditional territories, lands and waters across Turtle Island, where we work, play, live and learn from and where we connect our minds, bodies, hearts and spirits. We honor all our ancestors. I would like us to take a moment to remember all those that have gone on before us and that their voices will be forever heard. It is my honor um, to introduce our team. Our team for Building Bridges 1 and 2 was from BC, Saskatchewan and Ontario and the presenters today will introduce themselves. So Quay, uh, Ninja Luisi Valerie, um, I am Mi'kmaq, Haida, Gypsy, and UK Islander descent, and I'm speaking to you from the unceded ancestral traditional territories of the Coast Salish peoples, their lands and their waters, and I honor the Musqueam, the Tsleil-Waututh, and the Squamish. Denise? Uh, thanks so much, Val. My name is Denise Jaworski, and I am zooming in today from the unceded territory of the Simshian people in northern BC. I identify as a settler and I am honored uh, to be on this land today. Thank you, Denise Claudette. Uh, good morning, Tanse. My name is Wapokwini, Claudette Cardinal to others, aka CC. I am Cree originally from Alberta and I have been living on the unceded ancestral traditional territories of the Squamish, Soleil Tooth, and Musqueam territories for over 25 years now in beautiful country. Hi, hi. Thank you, Claudette. Nilu? Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, my name is Nilufar, or Nilu, which means water lily in Farsi. Uh, I'm an immigrant settler here uh, on Turtle Island, and I'm very lucky um, right now to be on the lands of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Soleil Tooth peoples. Thank you, Bob. Hi, I'm Bob Hogg. I live on the unceded territories of the uh, Squamish and Seashelt Nations uh, in Roberts Creek, uh, <clears throat> uh, BC. Uh, that's uh, just outside of Gibson's. And uh, uh, yeah, I've lived here for about four or five years. Um, and I'm, I'm very happy to be here as a settler. Thank you. And we will be presenting on behalf of the Building More Bridges team. I we would like to say thank you. Living with HIV, it takes courage to share our lives, our blood, our voices, and our wisdoms. We trust you to honor this journey and remember us as you do this work. We are so much more than the statistic. We are the spirit of the numbers, and we are also the voices of the graphs and the tables. Our responsibility is to do our work with dedication and passion and remind ourselves to do our work with humility, respect, love, honesty, truth, wisdom, and courage. We would like to acknowledge all our funders that have made all this work possible. And now I would like to turn it over to Denise. Uh, thanks, Val. I'm going to just give a little bit of an introduction into the in original Building Bridges project, which started many years ago and which are the current Building More um, Bridges built off of. Um, and so this, uh, the original project, Building Bridges, um, is and was a community-based research collaboration of Indigenous and allied stakeholders and researchers that took place in both the East and West territories of Canada. Our research questions were asked by Indigenous people living with HIV and answered through uh, data included in the Hanok collaboration. The research was done using Indigenous traditional ceremonies at all stages, and many of the people who are part of building more bridges were part of the original building bridges, uh, and we also had team members from Toronto and Vancouver um, who were leading uh, this early work in, and from the East uh, the Far East Coast as well. So Renee was a big part of this early work 
um, Mona, Lucy, and Anita Benoit, and Mark Hall as well, um, were some of the, the, the members of our team. And there were so many more um, that um, were a part of the original Building Bridges. So thank you to everybody that was a part of the, the first project. Right, I keep going. Um, so the specific object, uh, objectives of um, Building Bridges were to engage Indigenous partners, Indigenous researchers, and allied researchers in the development of a research question. Well, actually, we did a couple of research questions. We also aimed to create a safer space using ceremony for Indigenous people living with HIV to be involved as members of the research team. And then we wanted to take the research questions that we identified and answer them using data that was included in PANOC. And finally, we wanted to collaboratively interpret the data and to ensure that the knowledge was taken to action in a culturally appropriate way. Through a series of culturally safe gatherings led by elders, we identified three research questions. And so um, I want to, uh, at this point, really thank Elder Roberta Price, who was uh, the elder for the original um, Building Bridges uh, project in Vancouver, um, and she was uh, such a key member of our team and taught us so many things, including how to make those medicine pouches that you see there. Um, Elder uh, Roberta um, has uh, given her blessing and her well wishes for the second uh, Building More Bridges project, um, but she has gone on and is doing some incredible things with the university um, and um, that uh, she really has to focus her, her efforts to, but she, um, she was such a great part of the first project and I thank her. Um, and so um, in the original project, um, so we were sort of split into two groups and each group or each team kind of worked together to come up with um, research questions. So I'm really focusing on the British Columbia side of things because that's the team that I was a part of. Uh, and Anita Benoit um, was um, sort of my counterpart uh, in the Ontario uh, side, side of things. Um, uh, so uh, the three research questions that came out of our meetings were asking for gaps uh, in care comparing Indigenous and non Indigenous people living with HIV and gaps that we identified were time to antiretroviral therapy treatment for interruption, time to virologic suppression, and time to death. And it was that first question that we focused on in the British Columbia team, uh, and Anita and her team uh, focused on the second two. And so, uh -oh, sorry, my notes. Um, and so the significance of this work is that, and again, I'm just focusing on, uh, or more so on the Vancouver um, group, and uh, the Vancouver group was made up of all um, Indigenous women living with HIV for our community partners. Uh, that was a decision we made early on to create a safe space um, in that particular context. The uh, group in Toronto had uh, both men and uh, women involved, um, and um, uh, so, so when I talk about um, the, uh, the women involved, I'm referring to the Vancouver group, and I do acknowledge that there were some fantastic men involved um, as well as allies and also um, men involved in the uh, Toronto um, project. Um, and so um, the, the work that we did and the Building Bridges work uh, study has shown us that um, women have had poorer outcomes and that we need to create more accessible and safe services for women living with HIV. Um, and we also saw that um, in, in general, Indigenous people living with HIV um, were more likely to have treatment interruptions from their antiretroviral therapy. And our group talking together um, came up with all sorts of different reasons why that may be a lot focused around access to care, um, mobility between communities and things like that, and a lot of um, areas that we can improve to, to provide better access to ongoing um, HIV care for women living with HIV, and for all, all people living with HIV, not just women. Um, and so the real, so we, we, throughout the study, we learned more about differences in HIV outcomes for Indigenous people living with HIV, but a lot of that we already knew to a certain degree, maybe not in this certain pop group of Indigenous people living with HIV in this certain province or, or this cohort, 
Um, but a lot of these things have come up before. But one of the really key learnings was that this study showed us how important it is to involve Indigenous people living with HIV in their own research, and research that is about them. It is so much more meaningful, and we found that we were asking questions that actually mattered to people rather than questions that people who were researchers sitting in an office thought would be important. Um, and um, uh, we found that through this work, we were able to share research from one nation to all nations. Um, and so, uh, in conclusion, from the original uh, Building Bridges work, um, we, through the analyses that we did, we found that Indigenous people had shorter time to HIV treatment interruption, were less likely to achieve HIV virologic suppression once um, starting therapy, and unfortunately had a shorter time to death. Um, we also found that um, people who inject drugs also had similar outcomes um, in, in terms of treatment interruption, virologic suppression, and time um, to death. Um, and um, that came out of our analyses as well. And finally, um, we found that when looking at both Indigenous heritage and injection drug use separately, they both independently uh, significantly were associated with those uh, HIV outcomes. And so, why, why are these findings important and what do we do from there? And so, when we took the, the data back to our partners, um, we talked about like, well, what does this mean? What can we do? How do we read between the lines and how do we have action based on this? And so, one of the big discussions that came out is that we, um, because in addition to finding uh, poor outcomes for Indigenous people, we found that people who inject drugs also had uh, poor outcomes. And so this really um, highlights the importance of supporting individuals who use drugs. And a lot of the people in our, on our team said, you know, we can't just focus on when, they're using, when people are using drugs. We also have to remember that their, their life is a journey and we need to support them during drug use. We need to support them during treatment and also after treatment to ensure ongoing wellness for people who use injection drugs. And then when we talked about these treatment interruptions and how uh, they could be, uh, one of the things that could be contributing is people kind of bouncing between care, not having good continuity of care, not having stable housing um, and homes. And um, one of the, the recommendations that we had for this is that really this is about uh, helping people find their home and whether that's a, uh, a spiritual, um, an emotional, or a physical home is really uh, helping to bring people home. Um, and so things that could be done to, to help people find home is really supporting Indigenous culture and including Indigenous culture in the work we do. Making sure that there's a space for Indigenous medicine as well as uh, what we call Western medicine or biomedical medicine. Ensuring that there's culturally safe care making sure that we're not just focusing on physical healing, but we also are um, looking at the importance and, and really uh, acknowledging the importance of spiritual uh, healing. And then finally, making sure from a health systems perspective that there is a way to have continuity of care for people that are moving uh, between communities and that when they um, switch communities, their care is able to, to move with them. Um, and then um, finally, um, one of the key principles that we used in this work was two-eyed seeing. And, um, oh, I think the slide got mixed up. Um, but um, Building Bridges um, has, oh, sorry, I think the slide got weary. I know, so, so going back to, to two-eyed seeing. So this is something that we really, <laughs> sorry, I, I'm a little, I had a really, a really tough week at work last week, so I'm a little bit off today, and I apologize. Um, so two-eyed seeing was something that we, um, we really valued in the work we, that we did, and really bringing those multiple perspectives and having those perspectives alongside each other and woven in um, to each other so that they 
supported each other in their strengths. Um, and um, we were able to do this um, by taking sort of what we know about um, statistics and biomedical science and weave into that indigenous knowledges and ways of knowing um, and sort of acknowledging that neither system is more important than the other and that there is space for both to contribute and that we get the best knowledge and we get the, the best process if we're actually inclusive of multiple different ways of knowing. And so that's one thing that we've really focused on is the value of two-eyed seeing uh, in our work. Okay, I'm gonna give Denise just a short break and I'll do this slide to introduce Building More Bridges. Um, thank you, Denise, for giving us uh, the background of Building Bridges One. And to know, thank you, Denise, on your busy schedule, um, that we have not even got together to rehearse this. So awesome job. So when we discussed of building more bridges, um, we were really hearing from our peers and especially from our peers in Saskatchewan. And we um, thought about this and uh, seeing a presentation earlier about when we build bridges, we have to know that there's something on either end of them. There's no sense in building those bridges if there's no one on the other end that receives it or really wants that information. So we really need to talk to the people that are living with HIV and the people from the lands. So we designed our beautiful um, logo for our work, um, exemplifying that we were going to be using indigenous ways of doing, along with the, the epidemiological, and that the living experience you see is right front and center of our bridge, right there. And that this is going to be community-based research and that we'll be honoring Indigenous worldviews. But on that bridge, as we go back and forth, that we are always working together and walking this path as the researchers, peers, and community, and that we're all researchers in this. And then the bridge had two um, arches and we thought, oh, those look like eyes. So let's look through these eyes with a Western view and an indigenous view. So you'll see the sailing ship there um, representing the Western views. Um, we had many ships in that view until we came up with our sailboat. Uh, one of the first ones was a, um, a settler ship and we, we really didn't want to activate anything. So we have this beautiful sailboat that sails with us and the canoe in the tradition of the west coast you'll see that the paddles are raised and this is um, traditionally on the west coast that um, when a, you are coming into someone else's territories or lands you put the canoe paddles up to show that you were showing your heart you came in peace and that you were being very respectful if the oars were down it means that you're coming in fast and hard and not with a good intention so we wanted to be really respectful of our culture and in, in building this bridge that bridges us all together and that we are able to work in allyship. Denise, would you like to continue? <laughs> all right, um, thanks so much, Val. And so now we're talking about sort of moving from building bridges to building more bridges, which is uh, sort of the sequel to our original work and I think one thing as we were going through the original slides there was a little bit of it that made me feel uncomfortable because a lot of what we did in the original work and a lot of the research questions and how we frame them actually still sort of worked within a deficit based approach we were looking at differences between indigenous and non-indigenous people and how outcomes were different and unfortunately worse and I think one thing that our group has learned and um, has grown from is that we need to move away from that approach and we need to look at strengths and we need to um, look at things and reshape things into a positive way. And so I think that's a lot of um, what we've tried to, to learn from our original work um, and uh, help to improve what we're doing now. Um, and so I'll, I'll just give an example of that, right? Actually, no, I'll give that example later. Okay. Um, so uh, just as with the original project, uh, Building Bridges project, community engagement is so key. 
Um, and so for this second round, the indigenous people who were living with HIV, who were part of the original team, were welcomed back, but this time really as experts. I mean, they were experts in the beginning, but now also experts in our process of research and experts in how we've done that. And we really valued their involvement in the original project and um, how they could um, contribute and lead this work. And then, of course, we value um, their expertise in Indigenous methodologies, as well as the expertise of new members of our team. Um, and so we've um, been welcoming and supporting new team members, particularly from Saskatchewan, where this uh, work took place, um, who hadn't been a part of Building Bridges before, but brought their own expertise and knowledge um, to the table. Um, and so the activities that we did um, for building more bridges and um, I'll sort of with the caveat that we managed to sweep in all of our, our, our retreat before COVID. So a lot of what we were able to do um, and the beautiful in-person activities and ceremonies that we did might not be possible in this current climate, but we're so grateful that we had the opportunity to to gather together. Um, and so um, what, what we, um, the, the activities that we planned for building our bridges was initially just getting things ready, meeting the team and um, with this team sort of from, from across Canada, a lot of members from Saskatchewan, from Ontario, from BC, um, we did some web-based and telephone-based planning meetings. And then we planned for this three-day retreat. Um, and we'll talk about the, the retreat on the next slide. And then after that retreat, we had sort of more um, web-based uh, meetings to talk about what happened and to make plans for where to go from here. And then we have some data interpretation meetings, which are actually just about to happen in the next month or so. And then after that, we're planning to have some writing workshops to actually take the information that we have and turn it into knowledge products so that we can share. And whether that would be writing or videos or art or songs, we don't know what that's going to look like yet because um, we haven't gotten there. Um, but the plan is to bring our team and parts of our team back together to take the information um, that we learned from our retreats and um, share it. And so um, now I'll talk about uh, the retreat. So um, at the Voices of Wisdom retreat, we included land-based uh, knowledge and activities in our work that was done on Treaty 6 territory. We did learning about this model of engagement, which we call the Building Bridges Indigenous Health Epidemiology Model, and we learned about the previous work that we did with um, Building Bridges. And Val, actually, I know this slide was assigned to me, but I think you have a lot that you could share about the retreat. So do you want to step in as well and just uh, that'll be on the next slide. Uh, I'll be sharing that. All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we're ready for the next one. Okay. I will. Uh... Oh, no, this is also yours. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. There we go. Um, so, again, um, the, the impacts, this, the, some of the impacts in this were, were similar um, to the, the, the previous study and that we identified research questions of importance to Indigenous communities um, and that we focused on sharing findings um, that were grounded within Indigenous um, worldviews and to build on the successes and, and address gaps but also really to focus on, on successes um, and then um, to again share this information and, and use it to inform health policy. Um, to support Indigenous people living with HIV. And so I'll give an example here of how we really had to reframe things to more of a strength-based um, approach. And so one of the, um, the issues uh, or, or one of the factors that our team members in Saskatchewan identified as impacting care was large distances to care traveling really far, not having services in small communities, and things really being centralized in major urban centers when a lot of people are living further out. So one of the questions that we asked was, well, how does this distance actually act as a determinant of health, and how does this distance impact HIV outcomes? And then we were like, well, what outcomes would we look at? And we came across this scoring system, and the scoring system was called the programmatic compliance score. 
And the higher the score you got, the basically the score was a, a marker of how bad you were doing. So you would get points for just not having good HIV care, not getting your viral loads done, not having a suppressed um, viral load, not being on the right therapy. And the more points you had, the worse your care was and the worse you were doing. And so we took this score and we said, hey, like this is a really negative thing. And we don't, we, we don't want to be focusing on how negative this is. And so what we did is we actually flipped it around and totally reversed it so that now it's actually the more points you get are markers of successes. And so if you get your viral loads done, um, adequate, uh, enough viral loads done in a year, you get a point. If you get on the right medication, you get a point. Um, and you get points um, for, for having good care rather than getting points for having bad care. Um, and then we also renamed the score. So this programmatic compliance score is a terrible name for something. Um, and there's just so many things that are awful with that name um, in the context of what we're doing. And so we renamed it and we, we brought our team together and we talked about like, well, what do we want to call this? And so we ended up calling it the Positive Partnership Score. And um, so I think that's one of the ways that we've sort of worked to focus on, on positive things and good things in, in the work that we're doing. Thank you, Denise. And I'll be speaking about arriving in Saskatoon in October of 2019. We began our work on the first day with an opening ceremony and a welcome to the territory. Each morning was started in a good way involving acknowledgement of our ancestral lands and our ancestors and honoring them and honoring those ancestors who walked before us. We started building connections and to build a connection with the lands, our, tree, our team traveled to Wanaskewan, a sacred place for peoples of the Northern Plains for over 6,000 years. We walked the lands of the Buffalo and the first peoples to feel the histories and to be witness to their ceremonies. At Wanaskewan, the group participated in a teepee raising and hoop dancing, learned about medicines growing from the land, cooked bannock over a campfire. Through these activities, our team reinforced connections within themselves, between one another and with the land. We walked where our ancestors had once walked and felt the energy and the knowledge of the land. It connected us all. The team was reintroduced to the two-eyed seeing guiding principles and how to create safer spaces by practicing respect, embracing wisdom, and acting with courage, honesty, truth, humility, and love. Researchers discussed Indigenous and settler worldviews and the importance of recognizing everyone as both teachers and as learners. These deep connections were called upon on the second day when researchers learned about epidemiology and working within the data confines of Canoc. Research priorities were identified through a sharing circle and included the importance of of studying all people living with HIV, not, jo not just those with stigmatized characteristics. The need for increased community HIV education and the importance of reinducing, or pardon me, the importance of reducing and eliminating HIV stigma. And we were weaving it all together. The Building More Bridges retreat, the, the team using our two I'd seeing to draw on the strengths of indigenous ways of knowing and the Western ways of knowing to bring both eyes together to ben benefit everyone. Indigenous team members were actively engaged in reciprocal knowledge exchange that highlighted the areas of research that were meaningful to them and their communities. Our work went so smoothly. It was as, a, was as whew, it was if our ancestors were guiding us with their knowledge and they were keeping us safe. Taking the time to honor the lands and traditions of many nations brought by our team members, all while keeping our hands busy. We were amazed that our research work was done ahead of schedule when we had it just jammed packed and we thought we wouldn't get it all done. We had little ones and youth join us in all our activities as this is the way of our ancestors. All the while we were drinking teas from local leaves and fruits, the team worked on rattles and medicine pouches. Shortly after we had finished our work, everyone went on a guided walk led by a team member, Knighton, 
to learn about the plants along the river in Saskatoon that held significance to the local Indigenous community and their ancestors as medicine, food, materials, and use in ceremony. And our team member Claudette will be sharing more with us shortly. And as Denise mentioned, we came up with our research questions. How does distance to an HIV specialist or community where an HIV specialist visits impact quality of HIV care? And how does peer support and cultural con connectivity improve HIV outcomes and quality of care? And stay tuned because the results are coming back to our team and we will be able to share them in the future. And now on a different way of doing things, I'm going to call for reflections from our team members. And that is the beautiful river where we actually walked in our ancestors' footprints. And I'd like to now have Claudette share her screen and share how it was for her, her to be a team member on Building More Bridges. Claudette? Thank you, Val. And one second, pushing the button. You cannot, I will need access because you cannot share your screen. Others have theirs, so you yeah. might have to. Yep, there we go. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, hang on. I'm still going there. Yep. No worries. Um, I might need technical help here. We did it earlier today. <laughs> How do you oh, there that? we go. Got it. All righty. There we go. Thank you. And one more second. Another click. And let me move us out of the way. Okay. Let me push the button. There we go. As you can see, my reflections, uh, uh, reflection from Building More Bridges project entitled My Spirit Came Home. And when I speak about my spirit coming home, it's the reflection of being immersed in culture where I didn't grow up with culture. I did do certain ceremonies, uh, but it just rang that back out. It just surfaced and came out and that's where I flourished with this. This project was so significant for me and I'll just, Let's just see what I created. Here we go. When I keep speak about more building more bridges, there's bridges all in 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 the work that we do as allies and researchers and peers uh, that are just starting and into the research uh, realm. Uh, so that's where th that those significant steps are taken. Little steps of all the team members that are involved. And I just wanted to say that, and then here we go. Like Val said, this is my first time ever raising a TP, even though it was a little mini one. And uh, in regards to the TP, you know when people say it takes a, a community to raise a ch child, it takes also community and, and the team members. This is how we built our, our existence in this uh, Building More Bridges uh, project. And then we had the lovely babies and like again with all the different uh, ages and groups and diversity and the people involved it just it, like Val said it was an easy flow of everybody learning and taking the time to educate one another and, and teach each other and on the left is the uh, TB uh, in its existence uh, the frame and then on the left I mean, on the right, sorry, my left, right, uh, is the teepee dressed. And in, 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 in the old traditional ways, the teepee would have been with uh, traditional hides or from the land. And I just wanted to say that. And then we had the lovely hoop dancing. And he has many hoops and he does all different creations. And this is him with the eagle. And then he uh, ended with uh, Mother Earth. And these, this is the lovely jingle dress dancer. And for me, this is significant. It's for the jingle dress dancer, it is a healing dance. So for me, being brought back to ceremony and embraced in culture, uh, this is one, maybe the dance that I might take up and learn. Uh, it is a, 
it's a lot of calf work. <laughs> and then I call this one the sands, sands of time. Uh, this is day two of the rattle making. So we had uh, we had to hang it up in our, our closet or in a pail so the water that was leaking out would mess up the hotel room. And this is the second day when we're um, finishing up the top touches on our rattle and this is us emptying up the sand that day. And then this is the lovely staff, uh, Allison, Nilu, and myself in regards to the hoop, uh, the, the mother earth that we created. And then this is the, the funny side of things because I'm a little dyslexic and, and get disoriented in my, my, my globe kind of collapsed and that's why I do not have it in the, the four picture of Bob, Allison, and Nilu and myself. It just I picked it up the wrong way and it just collapsed. It didn't make it for that final photo. Uh, this is the bannock and on the land of Wanaskewin. And you can see that Bob did not want to leave the fire. He did not want to leave the bannock at all. Uh, and that's our lovely jingle dress dancer that was our tour guide as well at Wanaskewin. And this is again on Wanaskewin when we went out for the uh, medicine teachings. And uh, this is Knighton. Uh, and I think Bob is uh, investigating the women's sage. So there is women's sage, men's sage. Uh, I think that is rosehip. And then there's some other medicines there with the ferns and, and foliage. Again, medicine. This is medicine. These two pictures to the left and the center are of a tamarack tree. And that's medicinal, and you can use that in medicine, in teas, and all kinds of ailments. And then the other little bright one over there, that is also a tamarack tree on our walk by the river in uh, downtown Saskatoon as well. Uh, this is the breakfast club, I call this one. And this is our lovely uh, PI with her lovely baby and the nutritious breakfast that we had and the conversations around breakfast for starting our day. And then when we go into the room, like Val said, there was ceremony and all that that we started with each day. And this is our lovely uh, Val instructing everyone how to make sure that the sand is complete and you fill it to a certain texture and you push it down so that you fill it to make that pouch, lovely pouch um, session. And then there's Bob getting more instruction and Allison kindly waiting in queue for her and the sand to fill. And there's Bob, ever so proud of his rattle and Milu. And like Val mentioned, we had scientists from all like different allies at this meeting. And this person on the right is so intricate with his stitch. It was like amazing. And he just caught on and he was just, and he's a doctor from Saskatchewan there. And it was just like amazing how the allies, the researchers, the 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 higher ups really engaged with the 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 teachings that were presented and there is bob again infatuated with this just the foliage the trees and the textures of everything you could just see him just really in deep thought about okay now hmm. and then my lovely maple tree uh other foliage in town and then we have the lovely Nilu. Uh, Nilu, I think it was her first time presenting, and that was her. Her, uh, and I really learned a lot from uh, Nilu, Allison, and Denise. It was really thorough, really down to like normal kind of language compared to like oh, you know, you get all those big equations and quartile and all this. I've, I've learned over the my time as a researcher and engaging in and this community-based work is to bring it back in normal language for community members. And that's the most important thing. You can do all this work with the papers and everything, but when it really comes down to it, you have to bring it, your level is up here, you gotta bring it down to our level. And then that's, this is what happened at this, at this, with this project. And there's lovely Denise explaining, this is what we're gonna be running through today. like. Val said everybody was participating. Things got done early so that it made it, gave us more time to explore the lovely uh, uh, surroundings. Uh, this, these are pictures of our moose uh, uh, elk hides and 
the pouches and the medicines that went in there. So there was, uh, we had cedar, we had sweet grass, we had tobacco, sage and lavender. So, and also people on our lovely walks in Saskatoon were uh, some even opted to put in a rock or something. Whatever was meaningful for somebody, they were allowed to put that into their pouch. And this is our other lovely research assistant, Denise's uh, helper, and that is lovely Simran. And then at the end, this is our little mosaic of all the rattles that were made that uh, weekend. And the baby's rattle is in the middle. It was so great to have babies, young young children, like adolescents age, and the elders, of course, and and the people of Saskatchewan really made this uh, quite the event. And then there's the water down there. And for my final slide, this is me at different venues, a different concepts. So the top one is maybe my headband of my regalia that I will wear one day. Uh, this is this is the slide to remind me to go to get in touch with my inner self and and I used to I I write with my right hand as well and this slide reminds me to get back into that to that practice uh, I'll just read and the, the little flowers these are all my doodles that I do when I'm attending meetings so I just wanted to incorporate that into the into this last slide. The four flowers represent my, my four children. Uh, the 25 years of living with HIV is the heart and the, the ribbon. And the quote, uh, the sun created wo woman power. He, I gotta get a little closer because my eyes, he used lightning to make a bridge. My reference here to lightning is us, the peers. We are the lightning that sparks that fire to anything that uh, our allies create. We are at that force. We're that initial and to make a bridge. And our bridge is you. All that we engage with is our allies. And from the moon to Mother Earth, women walked on that bridge. She is forever connected to the moon. And this was a quote from Leonard Crow Dog. For me, this encompasses exactly what happened in Saskatchewan for me personally. Um, my spirit came home. When I, when I speak about that, my mind, my heart, my mind, my body, my spirit, all, all was not fixed, but all was carried so well in a nourishing way that Culture is within me. I am culture. Culture is me. I am culture. Thank you. I, I. Thank you, Claudette, for sharing. And I will just share my screen. And I stopped sharing. There you go. Thank you. Um, and thank you so much for bringing us back uh, to the work we did and how research is so much more. Um, when we all connect and to show how much the land actually welcomed us when we went to the building that Claudette showed us where we were doing all the work and the presentations when we arrived there there was a ribbon of a very large ribbon on the ground and it had blown into the shape of an AIDS ribbon and the ribbon was red and as we were walking towards the building, I was thinking about, oh, I would love a feather from this land, and there was a feather. Uh, the land and our ancestors welcomed us, mm -hmm. and um, I will just put that up. And I've always said that you can't learn everything from a book. And so I am going to now sort of do some questions to the team. Um, from your book learning to our Indigenous ways of doing. And the first person I'm going to call on is our senior research scientist, Bob. And I have a question for you. If um, And here he is. And I would just like to say that 
when I'm doing my work, to know when my grandfather's with me, he ties things in knots. And so I have to take the time and the patience to think about it and to undo the knots. <laughs> and I think my grandfather was really picking on Bob that day because he had a lot of knots in his rattle making. So I was so grateful that my ancestors joined this group. So Bob, can you share with us your experience as a, I'll use this, book learned researcher scientist to work mm -hmm. alongside of us in our Indigenous ways of doing? Well, uh, thank you, Val. I really appreciate uh, the question. And also, uh, Denise and Claudette in, the, in your presentations. Sorry. Um, it just, uh, everything, I don't know how to turn it off. I think I'll just turn off my phone. But um, I just, uh, yeah, thank you so much, Claudette and Denise and Val, for, for your presentation. I really, this, I really learned a lot. I think in terms of my time there, I think I really, what I found from that is that um, it was very humbling in the sense that she, I learned a lot. <laughs> Sorry. It's, uh, uh, we have a, an issue with our septic. And so people are phoning me to tell me that it's probably not working, which I already know. <laughs> but anyhow, I apologize for that. Uh, so um, I, I really enjoyed the time because I learned a lot. I think the most important message that I learned, I think from myself and that I, I, I keep to this day is that learning that the land speaks to you. And I think that um, what I, and so what I do just in ter terms of my daily uh, walks or time outside, I, you, can, you can hear the land speak to you as a person. Uh, and so I don't really have, as a researcher, I don't have a great spirit, spirituality with the land. And so I think that's what I've learned a lot from uh, listening to Claudette and to Val uh, and to others that have helped me through that journey. So that's what I really appreciate from that. I think that also that I learned is that you don't have to come with the questions yourself, uh, that questions will come up naturally through um, through these types of gatherings and, the, and then that these questions are very important. And so it's a different way of doing research. And I think that I uh, really am glad that I had an opportunity to participate in it. And I'm sorry that COVID got in the way um, and that in terms of our, our, our other research that we, you know, in terms of other gatherings that we had planned, but I'm really looking forward to the day that we can get together again. So thank you so much, uh, Val, for the question. I hope that answers it. Yes, thank you so much. And after we finish, um, we're going to open up questions to the anyone that's listening. So there may be more. And I'll always cherish um, witnessing you carrying the little one, Denise's little one, as you were putting up that teepee and the look on the two of your faces and the connections that we all had with the land and ceremony was, to me, just very heartfelt and beautiful. So thank you, uh, Claudette, for including that picture. Nilu, um, I would like to ask you, um, how was it for you being part of Indigenous Ceremony? Thank you, Val, um, for the question and for inviting me uh, to speak here. It was uh, an unreal experience. I was so honored to be, to have been asked to even attend. Um, and I didn't expect everyone to just be so open and warm and kind-hearted and to share with me everything that they knew and <laughs> given all the presentations I've ever given, um, this audience here was the kindest and most supportive audience you could ever imagine. Everyone was attentive, like listening, um, asking questions, and it was just so lovely. And I had a lot of new things, um, uh, new experiences and new things to be engaged in. I made my first rattle. Uh, which is the rattle there. And I know this is maybe not the traditional way of doing it, but uh, Val said, she knows I, I love painting and I'm an artist. And she said, well, do you wanna, do you wanna paint on your rattle? And just allowing me um, to explore and giving me the teachings and the lessons um, of the traditional ways was, was just so beautiful. And I am very thankful for the, the experience that was gifted to me. Thank you. And I see that you're holding a little one. Do you wanna explain that? Yes, this is the lovely Maya. Um, she looks cute, but when 
in person. She is just a hundred times cuter. And she's, I think, the calmest baby I I've ever seen. I, I hadn't held a baby for a very, very long time and I was kind of scared, but um, this is Denise's lovely girl. And she said, no, it's okay. And this was the final day. So I held her and it was just so calming and she was so quiet and just lovely. It was, I honestly, I didn't want to give her back. <laughs> she was amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Denise, I have a question for you. Can you share with us how this journey has influenced your work today? Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Val. Um, I guess first, though, I'm going to say she is not the calmest little baby anymore. Uh, <laughs> very different. Um, and uh, I'm going to put, uh, you probably are all wondering what she looks like now. So I'm going to put a new picture from her second birthday into the chat. I'm not going to put it on the screen. But uh, for those of you that haven't seen her in a while, um, I am going to send it right now. Um, and I think being able to be a research team member and a mom at the same time was one of the most incredible experiences. Um, I mean, it was, uh, yeah, I, I'm just so grateful that I was able to have her there with me um, and that everybody was so welcoming of her and helped out so much and showed her so much love. Um, so thank you all. Um, so in terms of how, how this has influenced my work today, I'd say being a part of building bridges and building more bridges has fundamentally changed who I am as a person and how I see the world. It has taught me to question my own assumptions around ways of knowing and to open up my mind to different knowledge systems. It's taught me to look beyond the numbers and to see people. It's taught me about strength and I'm inspired by all the community partners that I've had the opportunity to work with. I'm also inspired by all of the team members who identify as settlers and their involvement gives me hope that reconciliation is possible. Finally, I'm inspired by Val and her incredible leadership, her courage to take on new and unfamiliar things and how she has taught me more than I could have ever imagined. Thank you and I love you, your family. Okay, now that I'm leaking, that's not fair because I usually try and make everyone else leak. Those words are so beautiful and heartwarming. Thank you. And it just exemplifies how we can all work together in this um, wonderful world of allyship and research. So I would like to thank everyone that presented today, their voices, all those living with HIV, all of you for taking this journey. And I hope there is a lot of questions for the team. So um, I'm opening it up, please. And thank you, all my relations. <laughs> Renee. <laughs> um, oh, thank you. That was a fantastic presentation. I really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, I'm particularly excited. So having having some of the like earlier conversations in Toronto um, with Anita Benoit and Earl Nagizek was there. Um, and and think that notion of Indigenous health epidemiology as a kind of a niche aspect of work in um, in the kind of field of epi science. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious if there's um, I don't know if we've published more about that particularly if there's interest in promoting that or advancing that or um you know several of us on this call are involved in a number of different projects i think where we're really intentionally wanting to bring an indigenous lens to uh to the big database big data set analysis um and and think about that and so um i really appreciate giving that more voice and the way that you framed it and explained it i think this is probably one of the very first projects that i was involved in in toronto where you know wanda and anita were gifting us with tobacco and offering us to come into the project and into the work in that traditional way um, and it's really influenced and set a tone for me thinking about how can is doing our research work more broadly since then um, so I, I have great affection and appreciation for this project but I, I, I really wanted to like dig into that notion of health epidemiology and, and it's just curious if there's any further comments or thinking or thoughts around that it's I'm gonna give that to Denise <laughs> as a facilitator I get to do this now Sounds good. Um, so um, I guess one of the things is that, so Anita and I um, worked together to kind of write up a description of the original Building Bridges project and how we um, sort of um, worked the Indigenous 
lens into what we were doing. And so that actually finally, after many years, has just been published. So I can try and get that out um, uh, in, um, for, for distribution. Um, and then Val recently um, just led a paper talking about what we've done with building more bridges and her experience in this work. Um, and um, that also um, looks like it's, we're just still working on some revisions, but it looks like that will also um, be published. But I'm sure, um, Val, with your permission to share it um, with Renee ahead of time, we can, we can do that too. Um, Carrie, I see your chat. I'm gonna to share the link. I'll see if I can find it. Um, and then the other thing that I'll tell you about, then this isn't about an indigenous lens, um, but this is, uh, I uh, did some writing and reflecting on how as a settler, I can sort of reconcile my own views um, and work with indigenous communities in this epidemiology work. So I'm happy to, to share that as well. But of course, that is very much from a, a settler perspective um, and that side of things. And I think I'll ask Bob, um, I heard the word big data. And as soon as I heard that, I thought of Bob. So I'll see if there's anything that you would like to add there. Yeah, I, I think that, I mean, Denise said a lot of the work that we are doing, there's the paper that uh, you're working on that's uh, going to be published around this. I think that what we, so we, uh, I really am very thankful for the group earlier on getting together with Canoc and moving it forward in this way. I think that was, uh, and, and having the opportunity to be involved in the second round much more. And so th that was a, a great opportunity. And I think with this, the coast study, we would like to do stuff as well in the same way. And so we do have a, uh, a few people, uh, Sarita, Kathleen, Milou, that are very much interested along with Denise and Val and, and Claudette that will help us with this journey. And so I think that uh, what it does with the big data is it gives a voice to the people that are there um, and hopefully, um, yeah, so that uh, we can learn from, from their records. Sorry, I got sidelined looking at a little one with their hat on in the picture. <laughs> she's very cute. She has a lot more hair now and she's, uh, yeah. Are there any other questions or comments that? Uh... And I, I just had a question about, um, the impact that the cultural activities had on your sense of uh, cohesion as a team. If there were particular activities that you thought um, were best done later toward the point at which you already felt like a team, or if there were particular activities that really worked to bring you together to form that team. Uh, I'll start and then I'll let anyone jump in because my memory isn't as good as I can remember yesterday. I cannot remember last year. Um, we had it loose. I'm very uh, let it happen when it happens and you have that let it go where it needs to go. And but knowing that we also need a set agenda, but we really needed to do ceremony first. Ceremony was always first uh, with all the teachings that went with it. Um, and it also knowing that our ceremonies are very similar but different on the lands and really respecting the lands that we were on to have their ceremony first um, and just because we came from such a diverse nations from all across like i said we were from toronto from northern bc larange um, reserve um, i think someone was from regina so it was just a beautiful um of bringing together and just by having our hands busy or just walking on the lands and feeling the energy of our ancestors, we all became one. It was just, and ceremony, and I sort of touched on it, we had a very packed agenda and Denise and I had worked on it and it's like, are we gonna get this done? Like how, and I'm going, no, we need to have nutritional breaks. You know, we are living with HIV, you know, 
a lot of us have diabetes and you know we have to make sure that we're all safe and um and we're thinking okay if we don't get it done like how are we going to get together again and finish it doing the ceremonies doing the activities making our keeping our hands busy it was like boom boom and we had like i don't know denise was a half hour or an hour left and we were done and it just it was like the ancestors spoke to us and okay this is what we want and and our peers uh living with hiv you know they they knew what community needed we didn't come in with an agenda of what they would want they knew what they needed we honored that and having the cannot team there knowing if we could answer that question saying yes we can answer that or no we can't so we can go a different way but it was just that relationship building by doing ceremony first i think worked just totally amazing um denise did you want to add to that and then i'll go to claudette and nilu well and valerie yeah and uh, thanks val i think um i mean you you hit the the main point i think it was coming together on the land and making those connections before we really dove into the technical work was so important i think that I, and i can't even really explain it but i just feel like we all connected and i don't think i could really put words to it but there was just just being together being on the land participating in ceremony i think it just formed this bond um, among our group members uh, that was just so important for moving forward with the work. And I don't think it would have been the same. I don't think it would have happened if we hadn't have, have done that first. Claudette? I will agree to, to what has been said so far. Uh, the, the grounding purpose of being in Saskatchewan, for, for me as a participant, I was there for nine days. So to be away from home for those uh, and all those uh, emotions that come about missing home, the connection with the peers from the land, and like everyone has mentioned before, hearing what they needed, not what we as people from the outside say, oh, we got this great project and we're going to come in here and boom. And now we're asking them to participate. It wasn't like that at all. It was like, Everybody was connecting with everyone. Everybody connected with different people that they haven't. Well, we just met each other. Some people we knew, others we didn't. And that was the, the grounding force of everything. And to smell medicine, like in the, in, and wafting in the hotel, like how often are you allowed to do that? It's very kind of like, eh, because of the smoke detectors, all of this technical stuff that would go on saying, oh, no, you can't do that here. Right. So it wasn't like that. It was just like, ah, oh, and you just look at the window, you know, getting your medicine pouches and getting all of this gathered up for your, 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 your essence, your, your protection. And it was, it was amazing that the, how we started every day with ceremony. Yeah. Thank you. Any insight? Yeah. Thank you. I think uh, everything that's been said before is absolutely right. And I feel very closely with it. I, I woke up every morning super excited, um, which is really interesting because usually when there's a research project, I'm always worried about, okay, are we going to get things done? Are we going to stick to schedule? How is this going to work? And I remember the first night uh, I went to Val's room and we were just packing up things uh, for every day into one bag. So we just take one bag and bring it downstairs. And day two was massive. And I looked at, my, <laughs> looked at her and thought, how are we going to get all this done? And then she goes, you know what? We're just gonna let it flow naturally um, and we're just gonna trust it and hope it it works and it was just unbelievable when we started the day with ceremony i felt that it was it was we created a safer space and everyone was just uh, so connected and so um it was just amazing and we got everything done with with time to spare and it was an incredible i can't even explain the connection that we had it was it was beautiful thank you there was um, a question dropped into the chat. Um, are there any next steps or more bridges planned? Mm. I guess I have to go to the money people about that. Denise, <laughs> I know you don't have the money. I know Bob is there, but. Uh... So the, 
the building more bridges, we're still partway through that. We still are bringing our team together to go over the results, which we just got. So um, that's kind of ongoing and then working with our team to, to share knowledge. So that's still happening. Um, we also have been fortunate enough to get some funding to do another project to take at not the same model, but the, the same ideas around the importance of Indigenous engagement in this work and apply it to another data set, so COAST, um, but really focus on a more discussion around the principles and the ethics of it and like what do we need to do to be able to to make this routine for all of the work that is done. Um, and what is the process? What are the considerations? How do we appropriately engage uh, Indigenous peoples? How do we support Indigenous peoples to lead this work? And so those are some of the questions um, that we're hoping to address to kind of um, almost take this and make it easier to share and spread. Um, and so that got put on hold because of COVID, but we're just trying to get going on it again. And Claudette um, is our uh, fantastic, uh, or will be our fantastic coordinator, um, or I don't even know if that's the right word, but Claudette is gonna play a huge role in moving this forward. Um, and so we're excited to um, be able to, to continue um, our, our work that way. Thank you. And I'm always into building more bridges and new bridges. Um, Bob, do you have any comments on this? Uh, no, not, not any more than Denise has. I think I'm really looking forward to, um, to getting together. And so the work that is going to be done through uh, Kenock for finding, more, finding out the results for those two studies that uh, were proposed uh, back in Saskatchewan. Um, and then also the work in Coast in terms of the work that we proposed there. I think that's very important work. Uh, not just for coast, but in general for uh, large data sets in terms of how to engage individuals um, in a way that is respectful. Then I'm also really looking forward going to go back to Saskatoon. Um, I think that would be to go back and visit that that same place because there's actually now um, the bison. Is it bison or buffalo? I always get confused. Yeah. But uh, buffalo, I believe, uh, that have baby buffalo that were born actually this year. So I'd like to go back and see them. Oh, bison. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, I'm just going to ask you one more question. Could you explain what COAST is for maybe those that might not know what that stands for? Uh, yeah, so COAST is a, I can't re remember what the acronym stands for, but Mark Hall, who was, uh, was uh, responsible for a lot of building working on the original Building Bridges team also came up with the acronym. And so it's a study linking uh, uh, people within the drug treatment program and, uh, and then linking their data to POP Data BC. And the, the whole data becomes anonymized. And then we have a comparative sample of anonymized people that are from the general BC population. And this allows us to look at how um, people are aging with HIV and how do they care, compare with the general population in terms of those patterns. Thank yes. you. And I do have it in writing that Jessica said, if there's anything that we can do to support, please let her know. And Not even. <laughs> <laughs> I can read and I have it in writing and it's bison that are there. <laughs> and Nilu has put the link for Coast in the chat box and I will now, oh, Jessica, you can't go off. I'm sure you have something you would like to say. <laughs> no. no? Okay. Do we have any further questions or comments? I think you did such a great presentation. There's a lot to take in. <laughs> it's always my feeling when I engage with all this big data and all like and think about Epi. It's just my mind is like ultimately or alternately like exploding with with questions and just overwhelmed. <laughs> so I'm like I need to sit and think with it. But it's just what a wonderful presentation. Just really enjoyed it.
Uh, so thank you all for joining us. Um, I would just like to say that when we did meet, and I think Claudette touched on it, and I think it was really important to say again, that we had such a diverse group from, um, we just became a team. Like there was no, you know, it was just, we were family and family being from little ones to teenagers, preteens, a young adult to all of us around the table from all ages, diversities and ages, right up to elders that it, I think this is what it truly made um, this a uh, very meaningful, important work that we did. And I can't wait to get, I dream of one day saying that I'm gonna walk down the aisle, but I mean the aisle of an airplane and hear the pilot say, please take your seat. And that's the aisle that I would love to walk down and I would love to go back to Saskatoon also and Saskatchewan and, uh, and of course, Nova Scotia. Um, but thank you all for joining us today and, and thank you uh, for sharing in this presentation. I thank all the um, Building More Bridges team members and everyone here that presented. So thank you for taking this journey with us. All my relations. Hey, hey. Nobody wants to leave. Nobody wants to leave.